One of my favorite East End authors is here, Tom Clavin. Hi, thanks for having me on the and show. And you hear the crowd cheering that, that you're here. I know, it's, it's all it's all because of me. And my favorite... Well, everybody's here tonight. Because you know, when I list my favorite books, Dark Noon. Dark Noon, yeah. And the Roger Maris book. Roger Maris, if Baseball's Reluctant Hero. Give me that title once again. Roger Maris, Baseball's Reluctant Hero. Now, all of us out there remember number 61 yes. and the battle for that 61 hits, 61 home runs. And it was long ago when I had a lot of hair and I was a lot thinner. I gave every Yankee fan that book, and everyone, diehard fans, enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And Tom, it was right, great working on it. And right now, you were, you intrigued me the other day when you mentioned it. Let's calm down. I'll be finished with the interview in a minute. Tom will be really like you know, fans. All his fans are crazy for him. <laughs> They're going to. Um, you're going to do a, a book. You're planning a book. You're on the way about Louis Prima. Yeah, I, actually, I have. Uh, in three weeks, uh, it'll be in stores. It's called That Old Black Magic, Louis Prima, Keeley Smith, and the Golden Age of Las Vegas. So it's about the special relationship, the love story of Louis and Keeley, the tremendous music they did Perfect together. Perfect partnership. Oh, it's a great partnership, and it lasted for a lot of years. And then the backdrop is Las Vegas in the 50s when you had it exploding as an entertainment. Uh, now, you know this. My brother and I are friars, uh -huh. the Friars Club. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, we honored Jerry Lewis. Yes. A, a lifetime achievement. Louis Prima, people don't know this, you know the Rat Pack, but Louis Prima was the inspiration of the Rat Pack. Yeah, yeah. He, Louis, Louis Prima was an inspiration for them in, in, in a sense that he was, he was a, such a terrific performer. And what would happen is Louis and Keeley would, wouldn't start their act until midnight and they would go till 6 a.m. So what happens is like Sinatra. Dean Martin, Jerry Martin and Lewis, when they were together, uh, Joey Bishop, the others, when they were done with their acts at two or three in the morning, they would come to the Sahara Hotel right. and they would stay and watch Louis and Keeley. And they would engage, it, you know, a lot of the acts traditionally, you know, from the big band singers on, would entertain and you'd be up here entertaining and the people would be eating and drinking. It'd right. be almost like background music. Right. But Louis and Keeley, actually engaged they broke through that wall they and did. they engaged they did they they, they became a la the the lounge act that broke through to become a mainline very popular act and in fact what keely what louis had keely do is that instead of going out there and trying to grab the people's attention keely was stand there stoic stoic up against the piano She's native american out. yeah looking around she was part cherokee a beautiful woman and she still is in a lot of ways. I mean, she's 82 years old now. But because people would start to wonder, what's Keely thinking? What she's doing? What is she doing there? Louis would jump all over the place. But everybody starts to turn their eyes on Keely. And, and, and they were focused on her. And she could grab an entire audience without singing a word. But then when she opened that mouth and sang, it, this gorgeous voice came out. So she was an amazing performer. And it's amazing their relationship. Uh, they subsequently divorced. They did. They and he replaced it with a uh, almost like a clone that didn't work out as no, well. No, no. G and my own uh, Prima, who became Louis' fifth wife, uh, she was actually very talented. She had a wonderful voice. She was a talented performer. But the audience, for the most part, wasn't going to buy Louis and Gia. They wanted Louis and Keeley. And there's a wonderful scene at the end of the book. Now, it's called a scene because maybe they'll make a movie of it one day. but. It's a wonderful scene where 10 years after they broke up, they had no contact with each other, and Louis playing Lake Tahoe with his band, and Keeley sneaks in with a friend just to see, to see the act. Now Louis was a performer who would see everybody, scan see the, the room, audience, scan the room, and he sees Keeley, and he he, he introduces, says, "My my ex-wife Keeley," and the crowd goes wild, and they start cheering, and they insist that Keeley go up there. And they, she goes up there, and they do that old black magic, like it sounded 10 years earlier. And so the band is really cooking. And they're Sam saying, Butera and the Sam Witnesses. Sam Butera, great sax player, and the Witnesses. And so they're saying, OK, let, let's do another number. And all of a sudden, it hits Keeley. She becomes overwhelmed by emotion. She bursts into tears. She flees the stage. And that was the last time they were together. So it's an amazing end of the story. It is. But it, uh, it was a. It showed a tempestuous relationship. The music was and is outrageous. Yeah. 
and that actually um, you can't be depressed when you listen to it. No. And no, it's no. a combination, being Italian American yeah. and listening how he how he engaged the lyrics of traditional Italian songs yeah. and notched them into in American uh, the American. Uh, to, yeah. To, to well, there's a point in the book where we're talking. I'm talking about Louis Prima during World War II before he met Keeley. It was actually not a good idea to sing Italian songs no. because you know Italy was allied with Germany. Right. But Louis Prima was so convincing and so popular and so positive that the audience just loved him all the more because he insisted on doing it. He didn't turn his back on Italian songs. He said, I'm going to put them out there. If you don't like me, you don't like me. But they loved him. It's amazing. Well, the title of the book? That old black magic, Louis Prima, Keely Smith, and the Golden Age of Las Vegas. Well, I'm going. I'm, stores in about two or three weeks. Well, I'm going to run. I'm going to order it all over. It's going to be available on Kindle, electronic. Yeah, all all kinds of yeah, okay. on cover, Kindle, everything. I'm going to get it in every different format, including a tattoo. I okay. think. I've got one sale. <laughs> no, two at my brother. Okay. Of of millions of sales. I, I hope and so. I, and the movie, I tell you, is long overdue. Hey, it's a love story and a musical all in one. You know, it's 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 they they genuinely loved each other to pieces and they made beautiful music together. My last question is, if you had to do the movie, who would you cast as lead? You know what? You know who I would cast first? I would cast the Keeley part first. Because I actually think that Keeley is a great survival story of how Keeley survived that marriage and revived her career when she was in her 60s. She came back. It's a great comeback story. I would, I would love to have somebody like a Natalie Portman uh, she would be great for it, or Reese Witherspoon, uh, so, somebody who's like 30s, 30ish, early early 30s, would be perfect for the part. And Louis? And Louis, you know, I went to the James Franco uh, Q and A today. He'd be great, but he's too young, I think. Yeah. Give, give him another few years, but he'd he'd be great for. It. He's a tremendous actor. I don't know if he can sing. But with Louis, it's not so much about the quality of the singing; it's the showmanship and the look. Yeah. And the look. Yeah. I agree with. It's going to be a. You got to hit the right one, but I think it's great. And you know, this is an aside. I have homes in Brooklyn, but uh, and I go to this local mozzarella place. <laughs> and believe it or not, they still deliver mozzarella to uh, Keely Smith. Oh yeah. So she's still very much uh, tied to her, to the yeah. Louis Prima line. I yeah, think. and you know, she's still a great performer. She did the New Orleans Jazz Festival in April. I saw her a couple of years ago, opening night, when she opened at Birdland. The year before that, I saw her at the Cafe Carlisle. She, she turned 82 in March, and she doesn't hide her age, but she's got that sassy, finger-snapping uh, thing going for her that she's, God the, see. And she's still a wonderful entertainer. Right. Well, God bless her. Thank and you. And God bless you, man. Thank I you very much. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.